Thanks to Wix for supporting PBS Digital Studios. This is a painting of a woman tending bar in Paris during the latter half of the 19th century. We know it was painted by French Impressionist Edouard Manet in 1882, during the storied Belle Epoque, a time of relative stability in France after over a century of revolution and conflict, after Paris had been transformed from a crowded labyrinth of winding streets to a modern city with new train terminals and straight wide boulevards. We know that it's set at the Folie Bergère, a Paris café concert where you could get a drink and be entertained. And we know Manet's model, Suzanne, actually worked at the Folie Bergère, but posed for the artist at his studio. But there's a heck of a lot we don't know. We don't know why we can see a man in the mirror behind her, but not where he should be in the space in front of her. We don't know what their relationship is, whether he's trying to buy a drink, or her, and we don't know what's going on inside of her head, behind the blank stare. Is she just a person, as unreadable from the outside as any other? Or is she a potent symbol of the estrangement of modern life? A kind of life where we witness and are part of the grand spectacle of capitalism and entertainment so central to our existence today. Let's better know a bar at the Folie Bergère. Manet unveiled his painting at the Paris Salon of 1882, among works like Alfred Philippe Roll's depiction of the first official celebration of Bastille Day. It was at the Salon that new, mostly safe academic art was tested out in front of audiences. But while most of Manet's Impressionist peers, like Claude Monet, had abandoned the Salon and formed their own exhibitions, Manet held firm to the institution, declaring, the Salon is the real field of battle. It's there that one must take one's measure. And there he took his measure on a number of occasions, with varying degrees of success. The jury rejected his absinthe drinker in 1859, but it accepted and awarded the Spanish singer in 1861. He was again denied in 1863, and instead exhibited his luncheon in the grass at the Salon de Refusé, causing quite the stir for its brazen depiction of a naked woman cavorting with clothed men, despite its clear reference to a much-loved Renaissance masterpiece. He drew upon another 16th century masterwork for a painting that was accepted by the Salon in 1865, but Manet's Olympia was reacted to with hostility and criticism. This was no sensual Venus, they objected, but a common courtesan, depicted flatly and much too plainly, whom one writer described like a corpse on the counters at the morgue. Of course, now it's much less provocative, but at the time Manet prided himself not on making tired, hazy, and idealized versions of past events, but on being a painter of modern life, in the words of his friend, the poet Baudelaire. Manet observed what was around him in bustling Paris, and rendered fragments of it in a distinct style. His sharp contrast and elimination of halftones we can credit to Spanish masters Goya and Velazquez, whom he greatly admired, as well as his interest, along with many of his time, in Japanese woodblock prints. Manet painted a street singer eating cherries, and fancy people gathered to hear music in gardens. He traveled to Spain and painted bullfights. He depicted scenes of the Franco-Prussian War and the execution of Maximilian in Mexico. He painted his friends, including artist Berta Morisot, writer Emile Zola, and Monet at work on his studio boat. Manet certainly wasn't the only one looking at modern life with fresh eyes, in ways that many considered slapdash and unfinished. But he was fixated less on the scenery and more on the people that populated it. Poet Stéphane Mallarmé understood this focus as paralleling the post-revolutionary shift in their country, accounting for the, quote, participation of a hitherto ignored people in the political life of France. This participation of the non-elite was also very much social, and the Folie Bergère was just one of a plethora of venues where the social classes of Paris would mix and enjoy its copious new forms of entertainment. Mallarmé put it this way, Today the multitude demands to see with its own eyes. And if our latter-day art is less glorious, intense, and rich, it's not without the compensation of truth, simplicity, and childlike charm. And so by the time we arrive at a bar at the Folie Bergère, Manet's last major painting before passing away at age 51 from complications due to syphilis, we have a better sense of the barmaid before us as a player, among many, in the circus of modern Parisian life. The Folie Bergère and other places like it were lit with the harsh and bright white light of newly electrified Paris. For two francs, you could enter and enjoy a popular singer, dancer, or trapeze act, so hilariously indicated by these dangling legs. You could also buy beer and champagne and meet prostitutes, as many have assumed are subject to be. She is presented to us frontally, 
arranged just so along with an assortment of refreshments available for sale, her waistline expertly mimicking the fluted bowl of oranges. The bar is decorated with flowers, and so is her décolletage. She is firmly part of the scene, rooted to her spot at this intransigent marble counter, dividing her from us and us from her. And who is us? Perhaps we're the gentleman in the mirror, whose reflection Manet has conveniently shifted at an angle so we can see it. A cartoonist at the time jokingly suggested to Manet what his picture should look like, but from behind she seems to be in an active exchange with the man, which is not at all reflected in the detached gaze we see. Perhaps the exchange had happened in the past, or was about to happen. Perhaps she's imagining it to happen. People couldn't reconcile the image at the time, and they haven't been able to since despite mountains of literature, reenactments, and explorations in virtual reality. The fact remains that she looks out at us, but is ultimately inaccessible. She doesn't quite meet our eyes, and her thoughts we can't pretend to know. More than many artists of the time, Manet set his focus on women. On rare occasions, they interact intently with others, but for the most part, they look out. We've caught them in moments of reverie, without strong or decodable emotion. It was the birth of the blasé attitude, what Georg Simmel described in 1903 as an indifference toward the distinctions between things, a psychic mood that is the correct subjective reflection of a complete money economy. The café concert embodied, for many upper-class Parisians, the vulgarity and immorality of modern life, and the loss inherent in the shift from the home as the center of social life to the café. As Alfred Delvaux described it in A Paris Guide, to live at home, to think at home, to eat and drink at home, we find this boring and inconvenient. We need publicity, daylight, the street, the cabaret, the café, the restaurant. We like to pose, to make a spectacle of ourselves, to have a public, a gallery, witnesses to our life. This was written in 1867, long before the words could ring painfully true in our social media-saturated ears. But perhaps the weight of this painting, and why Manet has been called the father of modernity, is because here we are shown the beginnings of cultural life as we now know it. In this contradictory picture, we cannot distinguish real life from reflection. The work is all surfaces, and what could be more relevant in this time, as we navigate the oft-mediated and mediating surfaces of our lives, and participate in the cycle of consumer and consumed, or perform our lives for a faceless crowd? In late 19th century Paris and today, there's an excitement to the spectacle, and to our participation in it, but also a sadness, an alienation, as we recognize ourselves as commodities. We recognize this look. We see it everywhere in others, and most of all, in ourselves. Do you make really cool things and want to share them with the world? Check out Wix.com if you're looking to make your own website for any number of reasons. We'd like to thank Wix for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Wix is a platform that allows you to build a personalized website to showcase your art, promote your business, set up an online shop, or test out new ideas. Their technology allows you to create something unique no matter your skill level with beautifully designed templates and all-in-one management. If you'd like to check it out, you can go to wix.com slash go slash art assignment or click the link in the description. Like our show? Subscribe! Really like our show? Support us by giving a little each month on Patreon. Many thanks to all of our patrons, especially Grandmasters of the Arts Vincent Appa and Indianapolis Homes Realty. 